Hello there, Des here again from GMIT Letter Frack with another of our SOLIDWORKS tutorials. Now just before we start, if you'd like more information on the degree programs we offer in furniture design, wood technology or teacher education, then see our Facebook or Twitter pages. So in this video I want to talk about the Revolved Boss Base feature within SOLIDWORKS. Now anything that could potentially be turned or made on a lathe or that has an axis of revolution or an axle of revolution uh, you would use the revolved boss base feature to model that in SOLIDWORKS typically. So here you can see on the right of the screen a chess set and most of the components have been modeled using the revolved boss base feature. Again another few examples of um, solids or, or models that have been created in this way but the focus of this tutorial will be one of these honey dippers. So by completing this tutorial we're going to talk about sketching and sketch constraints we're going to use a sketch picture. The main solids themselves will be generated using the Revolved Boss Base feature. And just to finish it off, we're going to add some material appearance. We're going to rotate or manipulate some of the wood grain and also etch or deboss some of the text you see here onto the, the stem of the honey dipper. So let's begin. Now moving over to SOLIDWORKS. If I was to start from scratch designing this, I would probably start sketching now, but instead I want to bring in a sketch picture as a background to trace around and give me an idea of the proper shape of the honey dipper. So let's begin a sketch of a line on the front plane. I'll hit spacebar and normal two, then go to tools, sketch tools and sketch picture. And here's a picture I've prepared earlier. If you're drawing along yourself at home, take a screen grab of this picture and use that as your picture. So let's set the overall length of this to be uh, 150. So if I pick this pink dot and drop it to the far left, pick the pink arrow, drop it to the far right, I can then type in a value, in my case 150, and press the green tick. Failing that, you could just use the drag handles on the extremities of the image to resize it. So I want to move that to approximately that position, make sure the origin is approximately there. Press the green tick to close the sketch picture. Uh, as it happens, I want to open that sketch picture again, so I'll simply double click its edge because I want to hit full image and set the transparency up about three quarters of the way. So to begin with, I'm going to start by drawing a line from the far left to the far right as best I can. Then use a spline to put a spline from the left to the right of that arc. Right click, select, and I'm going to add another spline, this time three points. One there at the left, one somewhere at the top, and one joining back up to here. Right click, select. So I will click this small spline to activate it, then each point has a drag handle with an arrow head and a diamond. The diamond will help steer the direction of the spline. The diamond will give you more or less of the spline to work with. So I want to click this diamond and set it to be vertical. So the best way to do that is simply select it and then hit vertical. While I'm at it, I'm going to drag these other ones, even drag the point until I get the approximate shape I'm after. Then moving over to this other spline, pick one of the diamonds and just drag it up a little until it gets the shape you're after. Now let's focus on this end portion of the, the tool. So I'm going to go and call up a line command. Start here with the line and come straight up. And I'll use the shortcut for the semicircle or the three point arc. Don't click the line, hover back over the point and then move away in the shape of a semicircle. We're going to have to do this six times and each time make sure it snaps onto proper horizontal alignment like that. So click that and bring it down and across and up and then move away, hover back and then move away. So again click the point, move away with the line, hover back and then draw the arc. Now 
on the last one. There we have it. So I want this geometry to be more or less fully defined. So what I will do is um, start adding some dimensions. I want all of these arcs to be the same radius, the same size. So I will dimension one of them. Let's set that to be 2 mil. To set all of them to be the same size, I will now hold control and click each of them in turn to select them. And just one small error there. I can see over in the selected entities, I've actually selected this point rather than the arc. So I can see point over here. Right click the point and delete it. So holding control, I will now click the arc. And all of those arcs need to be equal. So let's hit the equal constraint. I also want this line to be in alignment with this line. So let's set one of them to be a proper distance. So let's set this one to be offset 9 mil. Now by holding control and picking this line and that line, I can set those to be collinear. So this one moves, so I will tell this one to be a distance of 10 mil. I also want these two to be collinear, the one to the left, the one to the right. So the same trick, hold control, select both of them and collinear. At any point, if you're unsure what's moving or what's yet to be fully defined, click a blue point and you'll see the degree of freedom it has. It's also useful, um, it's a useful way of dragging the geometry back onto the sketch picture should it move. So I want this line at the bottom to stay put, so I'm going to dimension it. Um, and it's coming up at a dimension of uh, 150.54, so let's round that to 150. And I'm just going to peel my way around and add some dimensions here. So let's tell that to be 9. And I need to tell this to be a value. Anything that is blue needs a dimension. While I mess it, I want all of these horizontal lines to also be the same size. So let's hold control and click each of them in turn and we'll add an equal constraint to those. As far as I'm concerned, I'm more concerned with getting the geometry right than I am with tracing the exact precise size of the, the sketch picture that was there. That was just a guide for me. So what I'm going to have to do now is spend a bit of time telling all of these lines to be uh, particular sizes. So just peel your way around and add dimensions as you see fit. So here we are a few minutes later, I'm just about to add the last dimension and now this end portion of the honey dipper is fully defined. I know that because the geometry has turned black. Just to get the remainder of the sketch fully defined, if you try to add dimensions to this spline or indeed if you try to select it and then hit fix, it usually throws up an error. That's because the spline is already defined at certain points. So a lot of times to fully define a spline like this, simply try clicking the points and hitting the anchor, fix, and it turns them black. In this case, this point has not yet been defined, so click that point and hit the fix icon. Okay, so I'm happy with that sketch, so I'll hit the close sketch. And now if I do a features, revolved boss base, then hit this bottom line, you should get the 360 degree um, revolved sketch forming this solid. So at this point, it might be worth going along with a fillet, a very small radius fillet. Remember, it's just a constant size fillet, the first type. Let's say it's going to be 0.4 of a mil and just click all of those inner surfaces. Okay, I won't waste any more time adding those but they make it much more realistic when we apply the render later. So the next thing we're going to do is add some text along the little stem of this honey dipper. So to do that, we're going to go to Features, Reference Geometry, and Plane. Let's select the front plane as a reference and make sure by changing this value, this offset value, to say 20 in this case, that the new plane is not touching the solid or intersecting it. So press the green tick to approve its creation. 
Let's hit the spacebar and look 90 degrees to that plane and start a sketch on it. But we're going to start a sketch of a center line. And let's position the center line somewhere a little bit lower than center. We're going to use this center line to guide and position our text. So click the line and select this A. It's the text icon. So if I type in some text here, the text will use that as a baseline. Now I'm happy enough with that font, but if you want to change it, you can always deselect Use Document Font and select Font and make as many edits in here as you wish. They're pretty self-explanatory. What I will do though is select the text here and hit Center. Press the green tick to approve that. Uh, just a note that sometimes if the line is too short, uh, you will lose some of your text. So let's make that a little bit longer. And you can also, of course, drag the line up or down to position it exactly where you want it to be. So when you're happy with that, let's engrave that onto the stem. First of all, I will right click and hide the plane for neatness. So let's try that. We'll go to insert features and wrap. You'll be prompted to select a sketch. So either select it here or select it in the bottom of the feature manager, sketch four in my case and then select the surface of the face that you want to wrap onto. So this yellow outer frame represents the development of this blue surface, and the yellow text is a preview of where this text is going to be projected or wrapped. So there are three options. Scribe simply writes the text onto it. Emboss adds it and raises it out a little bit, but deboss actually etches or indents that text into the handle. Let's go with that one. I wanted to deboss 0.2 of a millimeter and press the green tick. And there you have it. You can see it's just indented its way into the surface. So let's now go over to the appearance of scenes and decals. We'll press this push pin so it stays open. If you expand appearances, then go down as far as organic, you will find wood. And I want, uh, let's say, beach. And I want a polished beach. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the entire part. So move over until it hits the part. So looking around, I'm happy enough with the grain direction pretty much everywhere. I just want to add some end grain here. So polished beach 2D. Let's find polished beach end grain. So drag and drop that onto the end surface there, but move across and apply it to the face only. I also want to apply that to that face and to all the faces that should get end grain. Now to edit the appearance of the end grain, or the direction rather, you can click it, press the drop down arrow beside appearances, and press the little swatch, the little sample beside face. And now this yellow ball in the center, if you click and drag that, you should be able to drag and rotate the grain direction. Because we put the grain direction for the rest of the part onto the entire part, if you click that and try to edit its direction, you can do pretty much everything with it but revolve it. Now if you do want to revolve it, you can always force it to revolve. Go to Mapping and then hit this Planar Mapping. But the problem is when you revolve it here, it revolves everywhere on all different faces. My advice to you is if you want to rotate individual grains on individual faces, then add, like this, the grain individually to each face at a time. So to finish up this, let's just make this text stand out a little bit. So what I like to do with that is go to Appearances, Plastic, a Low Gloss Plastic, Black, Low Gloss Plastic. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the feature. Sometimes it can be hard to do it here, so I'll drag and drop it onto the wrap feature in the browser. There we have it. So thanks for watching. Here's a couple of the honey dippers after the rendering has been applied. I hope you found that video useful, and if you want more, then please see our GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel.